be Thursday, April 16th at 7.30 p.m. Uh, first item should be, the second item is the roll call and the termination of a quorum, please. Chairperson Sutherland. Here. Vice Chairperson Verit Bailo. Secretary Matheson. Here. Ms. Jacob Crawford. Here. Mr. Raird. Here. We have a quorum. We do. That's good. Thank you all for the inconvenience in your lives, uh, especially to the the board members, but also to those applicants too, because it's a, kind of an imposition to everybody. So item three, I don't think we have a designation of an alternate for this meeting. Uh, moving to the approval of the agenda, we need to amend the agenda to add the adoption of BZA policy 2020-001, public input procedure for virtual meeting. Um, <clears throat> I would need someone to make that motion. Mr. Matheson is indicating he would like to. We have a second. Mary is seconding. All in favor? Oh, roll Aye. call. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Chairperson Sutherland. Yes. Vice Chairperson Bailo. You muted. Mr. Bailey, we can't hear you. Can't hear you. Nope, very little. But you can do this. Okay. <laughs> okay, that works. Okay. Secretary Matheson. Yes. Ms. Crawford. Yes. Mr. Aird. Yes. Yeah. Passes unanimously. Okay. We will now ask for the Approval of the agenda that was distributed in your packet earlier this week. I'll um, make that motion. Matheson is motioning. I'll, I'll make the motion to approve. Second that. Mr. Bailo is seconding. We have a roll call again, please. Okay. Vice Chair Bailo. Hi. Yes. Yes. You said yes. Okay. Secretary Matheson. Yes. Ms. Crawford. Yes. Mr. Raird. Yes. Chairperson Sutherland. Yes. Keep you unanimous. Okay. The agenda is approved. <clears throat> we need to do the approval of the minutes of our last meeting, which was on Thursday, January 2nd, 2020. Did anybody have any corrections or additions that they wanted to see and know before we move to? Sounds like we are all in agreement with them. If we could get a motion from one of the members to <clears throat> approve those minutes. Yes, for well, I will make that motion. Our group moving forward. Have a second. Mary. Mary, okay. No call, please. Secretary Matheson. Yes. Ms. Crawford. Yes. Mr. Raird. Yes. Chairperson Sutherland. Yes. Vice Chair Bail. Okay. Unanimous. Okay. <clears throat> now is the time for public comments on non agenda items only. Uh, can be a little different. Uh, are there, first of all, any comments from anyone that's on screen now? <clears throat> Participating in this meeting? Okay. Uh, is there anyone individually that wants to talk? Uh, Telephone participants. I think Mr. Roy is the only one. You on mute too. Pardon? Katie, unmute Joe. None. He has none. And okay, any written communications? We have no written communications. No written communication. 
Okay. <clears throat> this point in time, we're going to review the procedure for handling our appeals. <clears throat> we will start with a, a presentation by the planner uh, and the staff review of the, the project. Then we'll have the presentation by the petitioner. We will then have received the public comments. Comments can only vote hold from persons who have signed, well, they haven't signed a sign-in sheet, so they'll have to make themselves known. Uh, <clears throat> we will then have the recommendation of the planner, and then the board will deliberate, then we'll take action on, on the matter. <clears throat> uh, I usually do a little more on that, and it's a per section 1904 D1 of the Village Zoning Ordinance and the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act. As amended, the board must, prior to acting on a proposed variant, consider and make findings regarding several factors. The board may grant a dimensional or non use variance upon a finding that practical difficulties exist. To meet the test of practical difficulty, the applicant must demonstrate compliance with all of the following. Condition. If compliance with the ordinance prevents use of property or is unnecessarily burdensome, the variance will provide substantial justice to the applicant as well as to the property owners adjoining in the neighborhood. That the variance requested is the minimum possible. That the need for the variance is due to unique circumstances peculiar to the property. The problem necessitating the variance is not self-centered. So five conditions, we need to be uh, in agreement with all of those in order to have a positive result. In this case, we will have five members uh, voting with this, the full board. Three positive votes are required to approve uh, any requested variance. So. <clears throat> With that, I think we can proceed to the, the first case, uh, which is case A19-10, 596 Long Point Drive. Um, <clears throat> and we will begin with the planner's comments, please, Doug. Thank you, Mr. Chair and dear board members. We have reviewed the above reference variance application, A19-10 Kuchak Residence at 596 Long Point Drive submitted by Kenneth Kuchek to build a garage addition to an existing residential dwelling. The site is located on the west side of Long Point Drive and is zoned in the RL Residential Lake One Family Dwelling District. The parcel is non-conforming with respect to the minimum lot area and lot width requirements for the district. The existing dwelling is non-conforming with respect to the north side yard, which is a side yard setback. The proposal requires the following variance from the zoning ordinance. In Article 12, under the Schedule of, of Regulations, Section 12.02 Table for the RL Zoning District, the front yard setback requires 25 feet minimum. Uh, they're proposing 11.7 feet to the edge of the deck, so it requires a 13.3 foot variance. Uh, the second part. Also under Article 12, Schedule of Regulations, Section 12.02 Table, RL Zoning District, the maximum lot coverage. 40% maximum lot coverage is permitted. In this case, 2,159.36 square feet. There is existing 34.2 uh, lot coverage or 1,846 square feet. They're proposed with the addition brings the lot coverage up to 45.3 or 2,000% or 2,444 square feet. So the, the necessary lot coverage variance is 5.3% or 284 point six four square feet above the ordinance requirement. Now per section 19.04 capital D1 of the Village Zoning Ordinance and the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act, PA 110 of 2006 is amended. The board must, prior to acting on a proposed variance, consider and make findings regarding several factors. The board may grant a dimensional or non-use variance upon finding the practical difficulties exist. 
To meet the test of practical difficulty, the applicant must demonstrate compliance with the following. A, compliance with ordinance standards prevent use of property or is unnecessarily burdensome. The minimum required lot size for parcels in the RL residential lake zoning district is 7,200 square feet and the required lot width is 60 feet. The subject lot has an area of 5,398 square feet and a lot width of 40, which makes it a non-conforming lot with respect to lot area and lot width. Now, per the applicant, the existing garage is under the main level of the dwelling. The elevation of the current garage is significantly higher than Long Point Drive, resulting in a, in a fairly steep driveway. The applicant proposes to convert the existing garage into living space and build a new garage addition closer to the street and at street level. The plan also proposes the addition of an interior stairway from the main to lower levels to replace an existing spiral staircase. Based on a review of the topography shown on the site plan survey, the great difference from the street to the garage is approximately 10 feet. While this does not appear to be a very steep slope as seen in pictures, it is definitely at a steeper grade when compared to all the other garages on Long Point. The proposed garage is approximately 22 feet deep, which is a, a standard size that will accommodate most vehicles and is not considered excessive. Compliance and ordinance standards would likely result in the applicant not being able to build the garage as proposed since pushing the structure back from the street would result in the potential elimination of that, that new interior stairwell. While such modification is possible, having only an exterior stairway from access to low, from lower to upper levels of the dwelling can be a safety hazard and can be considered unnecessarily burdensome. B, the variance will pro provide substantial justice to applicant as well as property owner. Approval of the variances and proposed will provide substantial justice to the applicant by allowing them to construct the garage expand their living space and provide for interior access in their dwelling. And it is not averse to the interest of the property owner. While we typically have concerns regarding reduced front yard setback affecting traffic flow and sight distance on the abutting roadway, Long Point Drive is a dead end street. All of the dwellings adjacent to the subject site have garages placed closer to and on level with the street elevation. Long Point Drive also has a small public parking area on its east side along the site's frontage. Vehicles exist exiting the site will have adequate room for maneuvering. C, the variance requested is the minimum variance possible. As previously noted, the proposed garage is 22 feet deep, which is not excessive for a garage built to accommodate two regular sized vehicles. The garage could likely be set back more from the street. However, such a change would impact the applicant's ability to plate place the garage at street grade. Reducing the depth of the garage will not result in any significant benefit and may likely result in vehicles being parked in the driveway on the event the applicant owns a larger vehicle. D, need for variances is due to unique circumstances peculiar to the property. The subject parcel is smaller than required for the district, but is rectangular shaped. This is not a feature unique to the subject site and is common to almost all the properties located on Long Point. However, the small size and presence of lake frontage to the east and west creates a need for a safe access in the form of an indoor store well that would not ice over or be a hazard in winters. E, problem necessitating variance is not self-created. The problem necessitating the variances is partly self-created by the applicant's desire to provide a safer access into the garage from the street and have interior access to various levels of the dwelling. Now, Chair, should I continue with the recommendations and findings? We usually do that after the public hearing. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John. <clears throat> okay, now we will hear the Petitioner's presentation. Uh, Ken Petrick on my phone. Thanks. I, uh, I just want to start by uh, thanking the village staff and the board for making this meeting happen. I know uh, with everything going on, this is a challenge, but thank you. Um, 
as Doug said, we, we want to make improvements to our existing home on Long Point. You know, the lot is small and narrow. Um, currently, the garage is under the main level of the house. And so the elevation of the garage floor is significantly higher than the street, resulting in a steep uh, driveway. This was our first winter in the house, and we found, found out that it's rather challenging having such a steep driveway in winter um, with a car sliding down the driveway and falling down the driveway. So safety is definitely one of our concerns and, and one of the main reasons for wanting to uh, do this garage. So our plan includes uh, building a garage in front of the existing structure at street elevation and thereby eliminating the steep driveway. Um, and the plan also includes uh, adding a stairway from the lower levels of the house to the main level uh, on the south side. And that would replace a narrow spiral staircase that's inside the house. So the garage addition is uh, very similar and consistent with uh, neighboring properties. Um, at least three neighbors to the north and to the, uh, and to the south have, have all done the same thing of adding the garage in front of the building structure at the street level. Um, the, the variance we're requesting is the front setback. And what we've done is uh, we've taken the established front setback and we've stayed within that. So we're not going any closer to the road than our existing neighbors are already. Um, so the variances we're requesting are, are similar and consistent with neighboring properties. And by granting the variance, you'll allow us to improve the safety on our property by eliminating the steep driveway and eliminating the spiral staircase. I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Uh, any questions from the uh, the members of the board for Mr. Kutchek? At this point? Well, okay. we, we, we will, uh, you know, you should probably have gone to. Neighbors' driveways are only 13 feet from the garage to the street. Terrible, but I, I I didn't hear the entire comment. So you're telling me that all your neighbors' driveways only have 13 feet from the garage door to the street? Uh, yes, yes, that's correct. All the neighbors are will, will have have a similar setup where it's uh, uh, a short driveway going into a garage at the street level. Can the planner verify that? I'm going to look, uh, pull it up on Google Maps right now. Yeah, if you look at the houses on either side, moving forward, we'll make it consistent. Can so, you <laughs> share your screen? This board has granted these names to the. You said you want to answer. And allow. Uh, Thirteen feet, so everybody in the corner of the driveway is hanging in the street. I okay. I went yes, out sir. there. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It, it does appear that uh, the applicant's um, statement is correct. All of the driveways do look uh, fairly close to the street, um, and certainly not all of them could accommodate the vehicles parked in front. Yeah, and when I was out there, the neighbors on either side, they would be identical to what the applicant's asking for. Okay, any other comments from participating? Now we will need to open the hearing to <clears throat> the public portion of the hearing and ask for public comments. Um, this is a little bit awkward, as it seems to me, but we will see how this goes. Um, is there anyone in the audience aside from the members, which I don't believe there is, uh, for comments there? We'll do a one person on the 
Oh, Hello. Hey, Ed. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Ed, do you have a comment? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I've okay. actually um, looked at the, the concerns of the petitioner um, with other uh, prior property owners. And um, I, honestly, I saw the plans and I think they look fantastic. Um, I'm not a next door neighbor, but I could I could definitely fire a tennis ball at his house. And uh, I can tell you we're in full support of uh, of what he's trying to accomplish here. Thank you. We have a phone call. No, wait, wait, we have to. It will not. It will not let me unmute him. Can you unmute yourself, Joe? Yes, I did. Okay. No. George Davis, you're on the phone, right? Yes. Did you want to comment at the public hearing? Yes, I do. Go ahead. I, do. I, I live next door to the subject property, and he's asking for the two fences, one being the offset. And what he's asking for is an offset that's almost identical to, to my property. In fact, it would, if he gets his variance, it'll be like six properties in a row that have the same variance. And then he's, the second variance, he's asking for uh, the expansion of the footprint. Uh, he doesn't have the size of the properties. With the size of the properties on the lake, they're small. And he's not asking that for any more living space. He's just asking to have a garage they can access safely. So... Uh, in getting these variances, that does because it just makes the street more attractive to everybody that comes down our property. That's that's what I have to say. Thank you for calling. Okay, anything else? On Is there anybody else on the phone out there? That wants Okay. okay, written communications. Yes, I have two. I have two. Uh, the first one is from Mike Byers. I, Mike Byers, and my wife, Mary Byers, live at 592 Long Point, next door to the proposed garage site addition. We have no objections to the said variances proposed. I have lived here for 25 years and have seen many additions to homes on our street, including ours. All the lots on our street are non conforming and require variances to do any major improvements. Any improvements to a neighbor's home will only increase property values and make our street more attractive, both physically and monetarily. The proposed variances do not affect our home and only improve the neighborhood. The precedent has been set since the early 1970s with garages at the street level and decks above requiring many variances which were approved. Multiple homes on our street parents, 10, and parents have the exact same garage layout. This is an answer to our home, our street, and the lake life community for which we live. Please approve the said requested variances. We look forward to having an attractive home next door to us with wonderful neighbors. We are confident that the Kuchiks and their new home will be an answer to Long Point Drive and to Lake Orion, Wa lake Orion Waterfront. Mike Byers. Second one I have is from Steve and Jennifer from R Rimondini. Sorry, we are waiting, writing in reference to the proposed addition at 596 Long Point Drive. We are in support of the proposed addition and variance requests. The proposed addition is similar and consistent with neighboring properties on Long Point and will be a positive improvement on Long Point. Thank you, Steve and Jennifer Rimondini, 580 Long Point Drive. That's all I have. Okay, thank you for those. And with that, we'll close the uh, public hearing portion for this case. <clears throat> now will be time for board deliberation and action. Uh, <clears throat> board members wish to speak uh, on the case. They'll be asked to raise their hand and we'll try to recognize you. Uh, I'll raise my hand first and uh, after going through this and I'm looking at the property and looking at the neighborhood, I think everything I've heard is consistent with the 
what the applicant is asking for. I, I uh, have no uh, negative thoughts at all about uh, approving the uh, requested variance. Any other thoughts from board members? Yes, Barry. I, I concur with what you said. Thank you. I agree. I agree, yep. Okay. Yes. Dr. Bale is nodding his head. I assume that's a yes. And uh, Mr. Iyer, does uh, you have a question or? I would agree with it. Uh, I'm not sure that the properties in the past did have been put in your driveway that far, but since we've already done this in the past, we don't have a choice but to do this in front of us. So I think uh, there's no other option. The other ones have gotten the same bearings for years. I'm good with it. Okay, thank you. I didn't quite hear all of that on my system. Yes, sir. You want me to repeat it? A little louder if you could, please, Bob. Okay. What I said was, is I'm not sure that, you know, they, they should have given the in the past, but since they I already have, we can't do something different for this gentleman that was done in the past year. So since the other houses have gotten these variances, we basically have to give this gentleman a variance. Okay, now I th I think I got the gist of it the first time, but that helped. Thank you. Uh, and I I don't think we're we're doing. Uh, Something about setting a precedent or so forth that uh, I think it's looking at what is happening there. Um, I would suggest that we would entertain a motion to uh, approve the variances. If we have such a motion, I think we see one coming from Mary there. We have a second. Mr. Bailo, Dr. Bailo is seconding. We'll have a roll call vote, please. Doug, did you read the recommendation? We need to, are we basing oh, the, right. the approval on the letter or right. what is the what is the justification? You are right. I lost my script, aren't I? No, that's okay. No worries. I just want to make sure the record is correct. Does someone have to read that? Who made the motion? Do I have to read it? Well, you can you can just say it's based on if, if you agree with what if you're making the motion based on the McKenna letter, you can you can you can state that the that based on the reasons as listed in the McKenna letter on the recommendation in the McKenna letter. We should have McKenna okay. recommendation. I'm sorry, I should have done that, but no worries. Okay, so based on the recommendation and findings of the McKenna letter as principal planner i make a motion to approve the variances is that okay i think that's okay and yes that's okay was it dr balo that supported that yes yeah yeah okay supported by dr balo and then now we need a roll call vote ms crawford yes mr raird Yep. Chairperson Sutherland. Yes. Dr. Balo. Yes. <laughs> Secretary Matheson. Yes. That's unanimous. Okay. We can go ahead and uh, we wish you well and be well. <clears throat> Okay, we'll move on to the second item. Uh, I don't know if you want to see that. 820-01, uh, the Roy residence at 512 Long Point. as a neighborhood tonight. Uh, yeah, I think it's probably too small. We will ask now for the, the planner's comments on that item.
We're, we're not. But we can't hear you. Got to turn your microphone on, I think, Doug. Yeah, he's unmuted. Hmm. He's unmuted. Yeah, I can see he's unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. Okay. Thank you. So we reviewed the above reference variance application submitted by Ron and Linda Roy to demolish an existing dwelling and replace it with a new dwelling and attached garage at 512 Long Point. The site is on the west side of Long Point Drive and is zoned RL, residential one family lake dwelling. District. Parcel is non-conforming with, with respect to the minimum lot area for the district. Their proposal would require the following variances from the zoning ordinance. Under Article 12, Schedule of Regulations, Section 12.02, table in the RL zoning district, the front yard setback is minimum required 25 feet. They propose 6.1 feet to a deck overhang. So there's an 18.9 foot variance requested. For the waterfront yard setback, also in Article 12 under the schedule of regulations, they're required a 25 foot minimum setback. Um, they propose a 15.1 foot uh, setback to the rear overhang of the seawall, um, from the rear overhang to the seawall for a 9.9 .9 foot variance requested. Lastly, uh, the building height uh, in this RL district and Article 12, the schedule of regulations, there is a 30 foot maximum building height allowed. They propose uh, 32 feet, four and a half inches for a um, two foot and four and a half inch variance request. Per section 19.04, capital D, one of the village's zoning ordinance and the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act as amended, the board must prior to act on a proposed variance, consider and make findings regarding several factors. The board may grant a dimensional or non-use variance upon finding that practical difficulties exist. To meet the test of practical difficulty, the applicant must demonstrate compliance with the following. A. Compliance with ordinance standards prevents the use of property or is unnecessarily burdensome. The minimum required lot size for parcels in the RL district is 7,200 square feet and the required lot with is 60 feet. The subject lot has a lot with of 70 feet, but a depth of only 55.3 feet, which results in a lot area of 4,326 feet, 0.2 square feet, which makes it non-conforming lot with respect to lot area. The subject site also has a treated land frontage. Um, although uh, we need to follow up eventually to get proof of ownership with the accreted land, the lack of proof does not affect the variance requested at this time. Uh, the boathouse apparently on the west side of the property is located on the accreted land. Now, the applicant had previously re requested and was granted variances in early 2019 team to build on this parcel. It included a one and a half foot height variance, an 8.1 front yard variance, and a 17.4 foot lakeside variant, setback variant. The applicant subsequently determined the need for an elevator in the structure and revised the plans, which resulted in the need for an increased height variance and different setback variant. Per the applicant, the need for the height variance is due to the need for higher ceilings in modern rate lakefront home. The applicant also contends that the front yard setback variances are to provide support posts for the second story deck only. The application does not list the need for a variance from the waterfront yard setback, which is also required. Although the applicant references the prior approval and extension at this time, a variance review is based on the facts presented with the application at this time. Our review of this proposal is based on the floor plans and not based on any that currently submitted and not based on any prior action. The existing dwelling on the site is 456 and a half fair suite and is being replaced with a dwelling and garage um, with a footprint of uh, 1,486 and a half square feet in size. The subject site is the second property from the end of Long Point Peninsula, allowing for visibility 
from the lake on the east and west side. The increase in the height of the structure, even by a few inches, has significant impact on the view from the lake. While higher ceilings are certainly desirable in modern construction, they are not a necessity for use of the property. The proposed plan for the dwelling includes a recreation room with kitchenette and personal elevator on the lower level, decks on the front and rear, along with an approximately 550 square foot great room on the second story and a master suite with a 240 square foot bathroom and separate laundry room. While the floor plan is the applicant's prerogative, the proposed expansive living areas necessitate a larger footprint for the dwelling and consequently reduce the setback. We acknowledge that the reduced depth of the lot and smaller size pose a challenge and will likely require approval of some variances. However, the dwelling proposed on the site is excessive. The lots along Long Point were originally platted and intended as lakefront cottage, cottages. Over the years, the structures evolved into a year-round residence. While the need to upgrade these structures to provide convenience and comfort as full-time dwellings is understandable, the size of the structure proposed must be reasonable. Compliance with the ordinance standard for building height would require a reduction in ceiling heights at each level, which is not considered unnecessarily burdensome. Compliance with the ordinance standards in its entirety for front and waterfront setbacks would render the parcel unbuildable. We are supportive of some variance from the setback requirements to allow for the construction of a reasonable dwelling. However, the proposal at this time is excessive and cannot be supported. Letter B, the variance will provide substantial justice to applicant as well as property owners. Approval of the variances will provide substantial justice to the applicant by allowing them to construct a large dwelling with an attached garage as desired, but it is not in the interest of the village as the whole or the intent of the zoning order. While the structure is proposed to be located in compliance with side yard setback, the increase in height and reduced setbacks will create the visual of a large building mass on the peninsula. The village has previously heard concerns from residents about the mass and height of structures on the lake. The visibility of this structure from both sides of the lake and the lack of any significant tree cover, cover create the impression of an excessively built lot. C, variance requested is minimum possible. These variances requested are not the minimum possible. Reduction in the ceiling height can eliminate the need for a variance from building height. Alteration of the floor plan to create living spaces that are proportionate to the size of the lot will result in smaller setback variances being requested. D, need for variances is due to unique circumstances peculiar to the property. Subject parcel is smaller than required for the district, but it is re rectangularly shaped. This is not a feature unique to the subject site as common to almost all properties located on Long Point. The need for the variances is due to the applicant's desire to build a dwelling with living space far in excess of what the lot can accommodate. E, problem necessitating variance is not self-created. The problem ne necessitating the variances is entirely self-created by the applicant's desire to replace an existing sw small dwelling with a significantly larger dwelling and attached garage. Thank you, Mr. Chair, that reviews our uh, Concludes our comments. And now we would have the uh, <clears throat> petitioner's presentation. Uh, I'm not sure one or both are. Yeah. So, say, thank you. This is Ron Roy. Can you hear me okay? I can. Thank you. Good. Um, yeah. So, I, uh, I also have my builder, Ed, who's on the call as well, um, who, who will uh, like, uh, chime in when, when needed. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for letting us come back a second time. I know that that's kind of against the norm, but uh, we felt that uh, there were reasons that we needed to come back. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of history, uh, you know, I'm 61 years old. Uh, I'm a, this is a first time builder, if you build for me. I uh, learned a lot of lessons and understand this same process much better now. Um, if I would have listened to my wife in the beginning, I probably would have uh, saved a little bit of heartache here, but uh, uh, you know, we're learning and things are coming into place. I also want to point out that when we did this roughly a year ago, uh, I think it, I believe it was Mary, um, even though she approved our variances at that time, she made a couple comments about you know this not wanting to look like a big plain structure at the end of a street um, to make it look more like a home. And so 
Uh, the second look at this build was really designed to address some of those concerns. So if I could, could I uh, present a couple things real quick? Uh, um, yes. uh, Steve, let's see if we can do this. Can you pass the remote over to him, Katie? Uh, host disabled attendee screen sharing is a setting. I'm looking. Maybe I can do it. Um, I know, I know. Uh, let's see, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Can I find him? Oh, allow participants to screen share. I got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. You should be able to, Mr. Roy. Okay. Thank you. All right. So you can see uh, basically a map of Lake Orion. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sir. All right. So the point of this being is, you know, I know that we've been locked up a little bit now and, uh, just kind of get a refresher. Um, you know, this is the, the property um, that in question here at the end of Long Point, just in case anybody did not know um, where it was located. Um, the other reason I bring this up is I just, I want to quickly point out, uh, even though the comment is made that, you know, a lot of these parcels are kind of unique and different, uh, ours is, is very unique in that most of the other lots um, on the street go from front to back. Uh, with with their distance right so it's their house is built narrow side to side and and deep from a front to back perspective our lot is completely different um we kind of sit uh opposite of that where we have a 70 foot wide lot and only a 50 foot wide deep lot where if you look at some of the other dwellings you can see here you know towards the other part of the street it's kind of cookie cutter 40 foot lots there and you know therefore and after each other so I, the point being is that, you know, this is a different parcel and it requires us to do things differently. And that's why our house, even though if I was to uh, rotate it to fit into one of these other lots, it would be smaller than most of these other homes um, because I have to sit kind of, this, you know, with the street, it has an appearance of being a, a large home. And we've, you know, we've tried to do some things to uh, address that in the design. Uh, for what was requested last time we were in front of the board. And there was a question about lack of trees and stuff. And, you know, we would fully landscape this property. We haven't done anything yet because we want to get the house design done first so we can figure out what the landscape would actually look like. So I think we will um, be addressing that. Secondly, I want to just point out is, uh, um, you know, this is the current house you can see here. Well, maybe you can. Uh, you know, how close it is to the road. I mean, we're, we're basically on top of the road today. But the, the main point of this is, one of the concerns was this, that we're going to build this giant house at the end of the street. You can see here that this house next to us is a three-story house um, that's been there for quite some time. And in actuality, um, it goes from the street to the water. Um, you know, so I, this was built, I believe, long before variances were um, fully enforced. But um, you know, this is a, a very large home. And if I go the other way, this home is also a three-story house as well. So I'm not trying to ask for something that is, you know, totally um, non-fitting with, with at least my neighbors on both sides. So I just wanted to make that um, point out. And then um, something uh, real quick, I just wanted to point out, and this was something in the last one that you know, we talked to Ken about is, you know, a lot of the houses on, uh, you know, Long Point have these style decks that come out um, from their second story and, you know, come out almost to the street. And we're just trying to be in line with all those and achieve a very similar look. Any questions on that at all or? So the main difference is our second story deck, you know, we won't have a garage underneath it. We will just have posts here. And actually the house will be set back another 10 feet. So be very unintrusive from, you know, a side view or from a blocking perspective with any of the neighbors. Um, 
So with that, um, I'd like to address really, if you, if you don't mind, um, the request for variances kind of in reverse order. Um, number three, which is really the one that kind of governs the other ones in this is that, uh, is, a, is the height variance. So after we came in and got approval for the 31.5, uh, when we were doing some final design with Ed and going through what we wanted to do, um, we really decided that my wife who has had hip surgery, knee surgery, she has rheumatoid arthritis, that it was gonna be fairly burdensome for us to spend, you know, I'll say a long term stay in this house. We wanna make this our permanent residence. Um, without something that assists us going up and down two flights of stairs every day. So, um, three flights of stairs, I guess, sorry. Um, so we said, all right, you know, we want to look at putting in a personal elevator. And in order to do that, um, because of the roof pitch, um, which is already the lowest it can possibly be at a 12 floor, um, we had to add some height um, between the floors to allow the the installation of an elevator. So that was uh, really the primary concern um, for the uh, request for the height variances was really for um, you know, a long livable, usable, usable live, sorry, a long time living space within this house. And then secondly, um, you know, in going through some of the final design documents with, with Ed, uh, and Ed, you can chime in here if, if you know if I'm saying anything incorrectly. You know, we had to factor in a 24 inch uh, floor joist to support basically the load because we do have some fairly long spans in this house and to support the weight and the different things that factor into that. You know, we wanted to go with something that we knew was not going to cause a problem. So when we factored in the three things, 12 point, a 12 floor roof pitch, the need for an elevator, which has to be kind of central uh, in the middle of the house because it has to be at the highest point where we have as much roof access as possible. And, uh, you know, just, uh, the, yeah, the support for that is the reason that we're asking for the extra um, really 10 inches than we're, that we were already granted before. And if I look at these pictures that were uh, presented the last go around, you can see that even with the, a uh, one and a half foot variance that was approved. Um, I know it's hard to tell here, but you know we were still probably a foot lower uh, than our neighbor from a total height variance. So now we're just asking to go up 10 more inches. So we're gonna be, I'll say much in line, but no, no bigger than you know, our neighbor to that side and just slightly over our neighbor to the other side. So if I go then to um, the, the uh, street side setback, one of the things that we had uh, built into the house before was basically a partially recessed um, deck. Well, because we had to put the elevator in and, and coupling that with the staircase and everything else, uh, we had to push that deck out. And you know, I'm, I'm happy for that for two reasons. Is one, uh, we're very social on the street. And our, our house is kind of a destination for um, a lot of the people on the street, especially the fellow dog lovers. And uh, you know, usually people coming down the street would stop. And even though that deck is on the ground floor level today, um, people would all you know come by, stop, sit for a while with us. We wanted to maintain kind of that lifestyle. So now with this second variance, you know, we're looking to put uh, a ten foot uh, deck off of the second level. Um, that you know there'll be nothing underneath it just you know be green space from that aspect um but this will give us you know a very similar lifestyle to what we had today it'll match from a from a look perspective uh you know what a lot of the other neighbors have and you know secondly this is one of a few things but you know to what mary had voiced before you know concern of just kind of a, a big flat facade that uh you know would look kind of more like an industrial building than a house this will keep it, you know, in line with a lot of the other houses that have that kind of porch on it. The, the third variance, which is the uh, water site setback, um, we ended up having to move that roughly a foot back. And the reason being is uh, we didn't make the house bigger or do anything like that. We physically moved the entire structure back a little bit um, 
to make it so that we could, you know, put this porch on and not really infringe too much on the on the front side set. So um, even though I understand, you know, what was said by what was said by uh, uh, you know uh, Doug earlier, um, I, I do think that you know this is in reason to other uh, properties on the lake. Um, if you look at other streets outside of Long Point, um, there's a lot of three-story homes. There's a lot of big footprint homes. Um, you know, the lake is changing. Um, even with all that said, uh, without the accreted land, which we do have, um, I, I do have the deed here. Um, it was sent in, so I don't know why it wasn't attached to the paperwork, but um, we're still at only 35% lot coverage. Um, so we're staying under that aspect. And, you know, I would, uh, my wife, Linda, and I would appreciate, you know, your, uh, would appreciate your, you know, looking at this and hopefully, you know, siding with what our requirements are and what we need. Um, Ed, would anything you'd like to add? Uh, yeah. Is it, is it possible for me to share as well? Uh, yeah, I just have to stop sharing. So hold on. All right. Go I'm ahead. new. I'm, I'm a new, new to Zoom. So yeah I'm, I'm, i'll I'll figure this out, I think, as long as I'm allowed to. so you should be able to share it now. All right, hang on one sec and there we go. And one, two, three, four, five. And this one. Okay, so uh, my name is Ed Sable. I've, I've uh, been in to see you good folks before. Uh, I live at Two Highland Avenue and um, I own Island Point Building Company. Um, I, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not crazy about these three story houses, but we, we keep building them. And, and the reason being is that, um, you know, folks are, are in these flat lots on the lake and, and they want to live there and they need enough room for their families. So we end up going up, not out. Um, the plans were presented to you. I know they're, they're black and white. They seem underwhelming, unfinished, but um, we take a lot of pride in our work. Um, this here, three-story house, um, Victoria Island. There's another three-story house, Victoria Island. Black and white plans don't give these any justice. We, um, we take a lot of pride in our product, and um, you can see details. Now the deck, the decks are a bigger deal than you think. Um, you know, when we're trying to build these three-story homes, I'll ask people to put decks on, even if they're not going to use them, just to break up these tall walls. And you can see, you know. Some of these might not be your flavor, but but we do our best to to create something that we can be proud of that that our neighbors aren't going to squawk at because I live in the neighborhood too. Um, this is another. This is uh, the last three had uh, one and a half foot variances, no elevators uh, in regards to the height. Um, but you can see with with this one in particular, you, you can't even see the roof with these low roof pitches because we're still trying to comply. In a perfect world, this should be a five or six 12. We live in Michigan, we want the snow to hit the roof and say, we, you know, fly off the roof. This house in particular, um, this house uh, doesn't look very tall in comparison to that any of the other ones. However, mid roof height on this house 33 feet, well under what we're asking for on Long Point. The only reason we were able to do this is because it was in a, a zone of mixed use and I didn't have to run it by uh, uh, the BZA. You can go up to, uh, I believe, 40 feet in mixed use. But you can tell with the tiered porch, uh, as it comes down in the second floor, much like uh, what we're trying to achieve at the Roy residence that, um, um, you know, basically uh, it, it just kind of reduces the whole boxiness of it. Granted, this house, you know, it's kind of a more modern flair. Um, I, I expect uh, that the, um, 
the Roy residence will be a little more charming and, and lend itself a little bit better to Long Point. Um, and then um, this last photo is the previously submitted applicant um, for Long Point. You know, from the street, it, it looks all right, but the difference between this design and the current one is when you turn sideways, these decks are almost recessed. It almost looks like uh, to Ron's point, like uh, like multifamily housing or something. Whereas by projecting the deck out in front of the house, um, it's not going to change the mass of the house. the the um, The footprint from the last application to this application is one hundred feet different, ten by ten. Um, it's and and they're only at thirty five percent coverage. Uh, there's plenty of room for green space, landscaping, all the good stuff. Um, so, and in respect to the um, the ceiling height, uh, the ceiling heights called out in these plans are eight foot seven per floor. Um, the The review makes it sound like they've got three floors of fifteen foot ceilings. Eight foot seven, even if they say nine foot on the second floor and 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 add a little to the bottom floor. But the, the reason we had to increase is because the elevator. Um, the elevator is one thing. The other thing that we're finding in these uh, homes with open floor plans, uh, even so much as a front load washer, if the joists are undersized, will shake the entire house, which is about the most embarrassing thing that you can find after you've built. Um, and we're trying to avoid that. So, so the engineering is, is kind of piling up on these and, and we'd rather build something that's going to last 150 years versus um, some of the other things going on in the neighborhood. So um, just my two cents, if you have any questions, shoot fire away, but um, that's all I got. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board members? What was what were the previous variances? I don't care about the height, but the setback. What were the previous ones? The previous street setback variance was. Uh, You'll have to give me a minute. It was eight, um, eight, eight feet ten inches. Um, now we're asking for six feet ten inches. The rear setback, um, the last go around was seventeen feet four inches, and now it'll be fifteen feet ten inches. So a couple of feet difference on each side. Correct. It's a but foot the, foot on the rear. But the, I mean, the, the essential, the, the footprint stayed the same and the house slid back so that the deck wouldn't be um, closer to the street. Right now, it's 7.1 feet to the property line, but it's actually closer to 11 feet to the actual street. Um, in respect to the neighbors on either side, the home to the north is only five feet out of the street and the home to the south is less than two feet out of the street. So in respect to the neighbors, it still tucks back in uh, quite a bit in comparison. Any other questions? Okay. I guess I would ask a couple of questions if I could. One would be uh, almost a year ago, proving on the First variance, and now we're a year down the road. I'm, I'm not sure what that. How, does the first variance now just disappear? Is this process, or if if we if we deny this request, they still have the variance. We approved a year ago, and is there a time limit on them? I thought there was a year time limit to start building from the time and the variance was approved, and 
I, I think we're in excess of that right now. I would have to check with Vigia on how the village has handled that in the past um, and whether uh, their engagement, even though they haven't filed for a building permit, would count as um, meeting the intent of the year deadline. Because it, it would be, it, it's, they came to us in advance of when they were last approved and we delayed the meeting and they've refined their building and, and need these accommodations in their opinion. So again, I would, I would defer. We, we want to be, uh, we don't want to be heavy handed, but we want to make sure that we adhere to the past practices. I'm not sure I have the answer to registered in my head. Um, if we deny this variance, the variance that was approved a year ago would still be in effect, but for a very limited period of time. Is that a fair statement? I think variance is only good for one year, period. So I think if you <laughs> that's what I thought. Doug? We can't hear you. Yeah, it looks like his connection froze up. Yeah. Oh, He's checking. Okay. Mr. Davis would like to speak. We're not at the public hearing yet, though. Oh. Just a second. Okay. He might want to call back in because this might take a little bit of time. Wait, are you ready for him to speak? Not yet. I'd just like oh, to. We're still taking the petitioner's right presentation. I, I'm kind of hung up on that. My question about what happens to that first first set of variances that were approved are they? I'm I'm not a zoning manual expert, but I do happen to have one. I've read through it, and to to my understanding, what it says is uh, the variances are good for a year if uh, they're not used in that time. The petitioner can request an extension. Of the existing variances, um, and I, I think we kind of drop that into this application. Um, but uh, beyond that, um, I, I don't know. I don't know what the dates are. I know one of the variances uh, was not advertised correctly, so we had to come back a month later um, to get something that was already um, reviewed. And approved, or at least a, a recommended I uh, by that. McKenna. I remember that happening. As I said, if I recall, we, well, I know we're not supposed to talk about what we did last time, I guess. But, uh, it was a difficult decision at that time, and it's a difficult decision now. And I'm. Uh, we get Doug? That's what I was going to ask. Did we get Doug back? We're not hearing it, Doug. Doug, we can't hear you again. You have to do something on your end. You're unmuted, but it's not coming through. Yeah. 
No. Katie, maybe take them out and bring them back in. Try now. Is this better? Yes. I don't know. That's the magic fix that I don't know why it worked. Um, great. Um, so the question was, uh, what happens to the previous variances and the potential one-year time period that the ordinance requires um, the building permit to be issued? Uh, the building, the, the ordinance allows for an extension of those. So what I would advise if the ZBA does not approve this variance request or would like the applicant to submit revisions, is that the applicant also uh, apply for an extension, which they can do under the ordinance? I think they have that in their application. Okay. And you can grant, grant that 12-month extension. Because I think that is a factor in this, at least in my head. Um, the other question, Doug, I think I would have would go to you, or maybe we should wait till we get his recommendation and then. What was the other part of the question? Looking at the uh, lot coverage percentages, before and after, I, I was just kind of scratching my head, and I, I think there's an issue on the inclusion of the deck and the before calculation included the boathouse, the second one did not, there's the accreted land. I, I'm not sure what happens with, the, I guess the boathouse is on the accreted land uh, and, and the lot coverage, I mean, even the lot size numbers don't seem to, the math doesn't work for my, Hired accountant's head. Okay, and the, the lot coverage is not part of the zoning request or the variance request for this. Right. So when Vidya reviewed it, she the before and after proposal was acceptable to her. Um, you know, I would mention that this lot is a twenty nine hundred square feet smaller than. With my doing my math, it might not be that good. But if we included the boathouse as we did in the first calculation of the existing lot coverage and added the added set foot, a second floor deck square footage, we come up with quite a different answer. The boathouse is mostly over the water, so it's not built into the property. It was over the water the first time, too, I think. But it was in the accreted land. So since they've attained the accreted land, um, I'm looking at the existing. I, yeah, I believe the lot coverage went down from the previous request. We because have because the, the boathouse wasn't the second even floor in deck the should be included in the calculation, I believe, and it's not. But the the lot doesn't uh, when they're calculating the total of the lot, the subaqueous um, area, everything that's underwater doesn't count. The only land that counts is is above, and this boat house projects out over. The water, the the property line, um, actually extends out into the water. However, the the water area doesn't count when it comes to lot coverage. Only that that's you know that you can walk on with dry feet. Yeah, the the previous uh, proposal was thirty nine point seven percent of lot coverage, and this one is thirty five. I believe it's because we got the accreted land. So even though the physical deck took up some additional space. The accreted land uh, actually made it small, made it smaller, if you will, um, than previously.
Now, I don't totally understand accreted land. I'll, I'll, I'll confess to that because I don't have any. Um, can sell you some. We kind of have a question on, on, on where we could go with the, uh, uh, as far as the extension on, on the prior thing. So I think I'm satisfied there. Does anybody else have any other questions at this level? Before we get to Ms. Brenton. Can you actually hear me now? Yes. Yes, you can. Good. Um, I have a question on, and maybe this is for Doug and, and or for Ed. Can you verify that, I mean, the need for the, the extra distance between the floors for an elevator? I mean, is there a, a normal uh, a standard width that's needed for an elevator to go from floor to floor? The it's not so much needed because of the floor to floor. It's because of the deflection, uh, potential deflection of having the car traveling up through a structure. Um, you know, much like uh, I don't know, like a like a tram at the airport or anything else. Um, you know, most homes are built with a you know maybe a sixteen or an eighteen inch joist, but um, you start putting a large moving car with bodies and hundreds of pounds in it traveling up and down. Um, it's uh, it's 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 sound peace of mind to uh, um, to beef up the floor system to uh, to make sure when somebody's on the elevator, the entire house doesn't shake. So, Ed, what are you proposing the joist size being? They're in proposed this at twenty. They're proposed at twenty four inches. Um, That's a Pretty substantial floor joist. Well, there are also some pretty substantial spans, though, as well. As far as um, you know, if they were to do tile, any of these loadings, I mean, it's the problem is, like I said, what what we're finding is when we go to we take our plans and the the joist sizes are are figured out within the Michigan code, but the Michigan code I think falls short of of what. Um, some of these loads should actually be with the the addition of granite countertops and an appliance and all this stuff. What what we find is um, sags and all this other stuff. But the main concern here was uh, a stable uh, car travel for the uh, for the elevator to go up and down, and also the um, the roof has to accommodate two feet for the car to go up inside of, uh, beyond you know, your, your typical ceiling. So uh, the ceiling heights are called eight foot seven. So that, um, that elevator needs to be in the center of the house, which kind of, that didn't really help us because with a low roof pitch, we thought, oh, well, we'll just push it off to the corner and we'll still be able to use a smaller floor plan. Well, now you almost have this elephant in the room that you can't work around. And it has to be, like I said, in the center so that, because um, it doesn't just stop at eight foot seven, it has to be able to travel beyond because uh, some of the equipment is on top of the elevator. And with such a low roof pitch, um, it, it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. Um, now, is this technically an elevator or a lift? It's an elevator. So there is equipment at the top of the shaft. Right. right. So it's not a pneumatic lift that just goes from the bottom. They want, yeah, they want two feet at the top and they want a two foot pit. And it's just because obviously, you know, when they come down, they don't hit the ground. They have to be able to, you know, take the cushion. Okay, thank you for explaining that for me. Thank you. Oh, you're tight. I think you can use the steel and not wood. And you can get away with a lot less than 24 inches. My house is all small joists and concrete floors. And I'm no real close to 22 inches. I got 36 feet, I think 41 inches. So there is a way to build that. It would be stronger and it would be safer and it's easy for everything. Other thing you can do is use a tube elevator. I don't think they have that any kind of equipment on top and bottom. It looks like a, a bank key. Um, 
and they're, they're at, you know, better looking, you know, have to build a, a box around them, you know, they're, they're all set to go. Now, I personally don't have a big deal with the squat as a height look, foot or two, but I personally, I'd rather see you have a 612 look by reducing some of your force space, okay, than go to a 412 roof that, you know, uh, the last ability of the shingle in it, uh, you know, that's about minimal for a, a single manufactured even guarantee. Yeah, I, I don't disagree mm -hmm. on the roof fit, um, but, but if we have to um, yeah. pick our battles, I think the elevator is, mm -hmm. uh, is the number one. Okay. All right. So, Ed, have you looked into uh, steel floor joists? Um, like as far as things? as far as cost goes, that would be um, that would certainly hinder the budget in this case. All right, please. Is there it? We go. Go ahead. Okay, so I have I have two two one thing to say that I don't really think that the parameters or requirements for this elevator and how it's built and the joists or anything are anything to do with us, um, because that's more of a inspector and state permit. So, but I do have a question on this. Um, Mr. Roy said that the square footage for the existing. I'm not sure what he said about the existing percent. But on this application, the existing percentage of coverage is 25.5. And on the proposed, it's 35%. So that's numbers different than he just said a few moments ago. I was just reading off of the uh, survey that we got. So I, I maybe I got my number from the wrong place. I just, I pulled up the, the uh, the survey that Kennedy did, and they they had written down there, existing was twenty eight point eight. So they could have they could have figured something wrong there. Well, I'm just looking at your application. Your application says existing percentage of coverage, twenty five point five, proposed thirty five. Both of them do not include the boathouse, but the proposed one does not include the boathouse, as I mentioned. But it also does not include the deck. 217.5 square feet because it's at grade. So you're talking an increase of what 9.5 percent plus a deck. The deck doesn't so, factor in. It doesn't, but I'm just saying just to make this so that everybody knows what we're talking about because that's different than what you said and what Mr. Sutherland asked a question about. So I'm assuming this is accurate at 35 percent because it's on your application. Yes, that's what I have in front of me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other questions at this point? Now I think we can go to public portion of the hearing. And maybe that was what we were just doing. <laughs> kind of sounded like it. Anything more on virt from the virtual meeting participants? No, we have a phone call. No jurisdiction. Like this, that, that little thing at the bottom means we got a phone call? That's Dr. Balo's number. Did you no. call in Dr. Balo? Yes, I did. Thank you. That's his number. Thank you. George Davis, you're still on the line? George? Hello, George? Okay, no no phone participation then either. Oh, George, you there? No, I guess he hung up. Okay. And we've any written communications on this one? No written communications. None. Okay. <clears throat> well, George, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, did you want to speak? I do. I I I do have Mr. Davis on the phone now. Go ahead. Okay. I live on Long Point as well. 
wanted Lynn to do. And then I'm familiar with the building that's going on on the street. It's, it's always difficult because of lot sizes, configuration of the lots compared to the homes that are on it. I think what they're trying to do is very commendable, and I think it's a good idea. And I fully support the building as designed. And I would like to see them enhance the street, enhance my house value, and the, and the appreciation and the beauty of the street. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, now I think we have to, we need the planner recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm going to read our, our recommendations and findings. Can you, you hear me? Can somebody nod? Yes. Great. Yeah. Uh, subject to any additional information presented and discussed by the applicant, board, and or the public during the public hearing and incorporated into the record prior to any findings being made, we recommend the Bo Board of Zoning Appeals deny the requested variances for the property located at 512 Long Point Drive. The above recommendation is based on the following findings of fact. Compliance with the ordinance standard for building height is achievable, while increased compliance with setbacks is feasible. The proposed structure is excessive for the lot. Number three, approval of the variances is contrary to the intent of the zoning ordinance and creates an excess building mass on the peninsula. Number four, the variances requested are not the minimum possible. Number five, the parcel is non-conforming and similar to parcels along Long Point. Number six, the need for variances is entirely self-created. Number seven, while the need for setback variances can be considered on a revised proposal, the structure as proposed is excessive. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to close the public hearing and We've kind of had more deliberation, but I think we need a little more deliberation, unfortunately. Mary, Mary has close. her hand up. Um, I just have a question, Jeff. If if we were to, if I were to make a motion on the recommendations and findings and agree with it, can there also be an addendum to extend the permit that we granted before? Does that have to go as one? I think that gets to my original question. And my understanding of what I've heard is that if we deny this variance request, they have requested that we approve an extension of the original variance request, which I think we could do. But what I mean is, does it have to be in one motion or would it be, would that be then two motions? That would be two, I okay. would say. Okay, all right, thank you. I would uh, when I read this through and then hearing again with the planner's recommendations, I um, first of all, I you know the the one that says the variants which requested are not the minimum possible. It's pretty hard to stretch this building structure to be minimal. Uh, anywhere near the minimum possible. And I, I agree with the planner's comment on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have to agree with what the builder's saying is that what we approved a year ago wasn't minimal either. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not that big a change, but it is concerning to me, nevertheless, uh, on the question of, you know, they're, they are not minimal. Uh, Uh, I want to find myself not second guessing what we did a year ago either, but that thought runs through my, my head, I guess. Bob? So the planner is calling it excessive for the lot, mm -hmm. but they're not even meeting lot minimum. They, they build up to 40% of that lot. So that part, you can't call it excessive if you're not overbuilding the lot. I get the setbacks, but I'm looking at some of the setbacks we've already given uh, other people on that same same street. Uh, and I don't think asking for that much difference. And if he has a problem with the height, okay, which 
as I say, I can't see how it's going to make any difference since the house to the one side is still going to be taller than what he's building. But it's that the height is something that he could work with by using different structural materials or changing the ceiling height. But as far as being accessible to the lot, obviously it's not because it hasn't built to the max of the lot. This, this is a difficult one, and I, I have a hard time uh, thinking back to what we did a year ago, but I I think we struggled, and, and I had questions back then because the drawings that were submitted were what I would call very minimal. Uh, and they were not complete drawings, and I think and I think you, the builder, had, had done them. And we struggled, and I struggled with particularly on the height variance that was requested at that point in time because I didn't think we could determine what you were being asked of based on the drawings that were submitted to us. And uh, <clears throat> I, I'm uh, I'm not sure why we struggle with height variances because a lot of that is if a lot is flat, you're stuck at one point, but if a lot is a walkout, you can go an extra 10 feet higher. It's kind of a dungeon kind of uh, stupid situation just because that's how the, the code works. You could ask your planner about that. Yeah, we're having but, kind of a hard time. I have at least understand. I think there's an echo somewhere in here. Is there? Okay, so what I'm trying to say is, okay, why we struggle with height, height variances, I'm not so sure for a few feet, because if his lot was a walkout, he'd be able to go to 10 foot higher, just because the way the cold reads is that you get uh, a certain percentage for it being a, a walkout. Uh, uh, so consequently, if, like I say, if the lot was dropped down, you'd have no problem with the height. So it's kind of a, the height is kind of a stupid argument, okay? I can get more of the argument, the front and back set back, okay? But also, so he obviously must have more width, and that's why he's not even up to 40% uh, of the, the lot capacity. So I think that um, as I do get some of the points with the setback, um, I think that uh, what he's asking for is, is, is not excessive at all. Okay, anybody else for comment? <clears throat> Do we think we're ready to vote and are we thinking we have a motion that we will be able to gather around. I think maybe we did a little more discussion on that. I'm still mostly on the negative part on this on my in my mind. Breton? Dr. Balo has his hand up. Yeah. The uh, the original front yard uh, setback that we had bought off on how far was that? I mean, the reason I ask is because it looks like there's a, a 10 foot, six inch deck on the front. And I would think that at a minimum you could, I didn't think it was very much. It was like a foot difference. So if you move that down to nine, you would stay, yeah, you I would think, stay within our original variant. I think there's something on these, on the measurements that just doesn't work here. And I think what it is is the you look on page 55, 58, where it shows the, the deck itself that's sticking off the front. I think it says 10 foot, 6 inches. Is that correct? And the difference between what he's asking for and what we had approved is only one foot. So at least the front yard setback, I mean, I don't know if it's quite necessary. I'm I'm truthfully okay with the height of the building. I, I understand the elevator portion and 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 exactly what Rob had said. We would have buy off on it if it was a, a slope yard, but because it's flat, we're not. So my only sticking point would be the the front yard 
setback and not so much the height. And then I don't know about the rear setback. That's, that's the only one I have in question. What do you guys think? This deck he's talking about. I have a question. Can I say anything at this time? Or yeah. So just in answer to that question, um, you know, we, we went from a 10 foot to a six foot um because we added that deck, but in order to also make up that space, we pushed the house back roughly. A foot and a half. So, I mean, the math all works out, but the house was shifted a little bit from the prior the prior uh, plans to allow for the deck. Um, so we're still today we're at a zero feet setback. Um, you know, six and a half feet, or you know, almost seven from one corner of the the property to just the post, um, and then you know, the house physical structure of the house is still uh, ten feet farther back than that. So. We're, we're very much in line with the original physical house footprint. It's now the post for the support for the deck that are in question here. So watch you make a deck eight foot then. Ten foot. Hmm. Well, I mean, you know, a deck, I mean, eight foot, we could look at it. I mean, that's the, that's the absolute minimum because you can't put a table and have people be able to sit and walk around the table and stuff and anything, you know, eight foot makes it tight. Um, and that's why we went with 10 originally, just because it's much easier to move and navigate that way. But if it makes a difference for you to get this variance, I'm sure you'd be willing to give up that two foot on that deck, right? Understood. But I, yeah, I just, I don't, I just, I just you know, I feel that the front, Yard setback being that we're already, uh, you know, going from being on the road to you know 16 feet to the house back um, is a pretty good improvement. Um, it's a pretty you know pretty big improvement. So you know I I would like to keep the the depth of the deck, but if you know if that's your decision, you know I have to live with it. So. Hey, Ed, or I guess Roy, Ron can answer this too. Um, so the current footprint, and I don't see the two overlaid in our package. So the current foot, footprint, you're currently right on the street by the, uh, I mean, it looks like it's in the picture, but I know when you actually look at it on your, your survey, is the current house right on the street? Or how far off is it? Ed, we can't hear you. Um, well, this is, I don't know if Ed. Oh, there we is, go. No. Can you I hear saw me? I'm talking. Yes. Oh, okay, so the existing deck right now is actually seven inches into the row. Okay. Um, and, and like I mentioned earlier, I know it, it was brought up in um, uh, the previous petitioner. Uh, the point of uh, EFS, which we use in RV properties. Um, I know we don't do it in RL, but um, this is a, a special circumstance in looking at the property next door uh, to the south. Uh, he's uh, less than two feet from the, not from the road, but from the property line, uh, which is we're requesting 7.1 foot from the property line just to the deck post. So it's not solid mass, it's transparent, never gonna be enclosed. And then the house on the end is just over five foot from the road. So it's still set to the inside of those two uh, residences. We're, we're trying to push in the right direction. Okay, Talk, talking in the right direction, I guess I'm gonna, I have a thing that I'm gonna throw out here would be a notion of, uh, I think the elevator is a big thing, and you said it's a big thing that's bringing you back for this visit to us again to need the variances. And uh, I think I understand that. And I would say, let's approve the height variance 
if it, that's being caused indeed being caused by the the elevator, but I would deny the other two variances. Well, we, we are actually farther from the property line on the uh, west side than we were on the first request, since they actually attained the land and the property line has now moved. Well, that mystifies me just as much as a treated land. Uh, I'll explain it to you another time. It, it's, a, <laughs> it's a very goofy thing we have out you here. might need a big time. Yeah. Um, I guess all I'm saying is, I think the big thing that changed from what I'm hearing in your presentation is you wanted an elevator. I, I agree that I think that's a good, it's not only a want, I think it's a need. So I think that's a legitimate thing. And, and the other things and buying accreted land and moving it here and moving it there, I think you should be able to build a very nice house within the variances that were approved the prior time around. And uh, if we went that route, I would be very amenable to supporting a, an extension of the the prior variance. Well, the, the, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. The, the problem is, is that um, before we had somewhat of a recessed deck going into the house um, that allowed us still some decent dual deck space, but with, with the elevator, it basically makes that impossible and so now we need to basically have that deck external to the house which also helps with the you know the overall look of the house and the kind of compliancy with the rest of the neighbors on the street um so it's 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 we really need all three because um has has we have a design it, you, giving us one without the other we just still can't build the house i, I i'm not at all sure what took a year to get to this point, and I don't want to do this again. Um, you asked us for what you wanted, and now you have something bigger. Elevator's a big deal. Uh, take that and, and be happy, I guess, is my message. Yes, Mary Mark? has her hand up. Yeah, I would... Uh... I would just disagree and say that the elevator is a want, not a need. I know that's a diff different than what you just said, Jim, but it, it is a want, not a need in my opinion. So I'm inclined to make a motion on the variances as proposed, which is three of them, correct? Yes. And then whether we want to extend or give permission for the one that's already in effect, to make that an extension? I don't think we have to do that if we approve these variances. No, but I'm inclined to, to deny these variances and make a motion to that. So if that's the case, are we gonna discuss first or is there a motion and we wanna vote on it? Or do we have two motions? I, I think we have to vote on it and then decide, then we'll know if we, it's appropriate to consider an extension of what was in place. Okay, because I, I guess I would rather, if I'm going to make the motion to deny this, I am in favor of extending the variances in the, for what they already have. I have, and I, oh, I, I guess I'm in favor of that plus the elevator because I have arthritis and some of those things and getting around problems. And I live in a two-story house, and you might as well burn the upstairs so I just mm. go there. But you're an existing house rather than a build, so there's some choices there, like a lift chair, whatever it might be. So I don't, I don't know. Do we want to discuss it more, or should someone make a motion, or should I make a motion and we vote? I'm not quite sure. Well, we can get several motions. I'd like to hear from Brad or Bill. Uh, what are, What are your opinions? I agree with Mary on that. I think the elevator is a want, not a uh, not a need. Well, I, I would just like to say that when you have somebody with arthritis and bad knees going up flights of stairs, it, it's it's not a want. Um, you know, this is we want to build this house to be our permanent home for many years to come, and without this, that's not going to happen because medically we won't be able to live in the house. 
first of all, all of these are considered a need if you if you need them. Okay, that's why uh, even the uh, uh, Social Security system will pay for some some stuff like that. So I'm not telling you that you should make a decision on whether you want to grant a, uh, a bigger house or a smaller house. But you say that an elevator is not a need or a want. I actually built my house with the provision of being able to put an elevator in since I'm already 64 and I'm being here to my heart. Okay, so <clears throat> right now it's not a need to me, but at some point in my life it probably will. So I, I don't agree with that part at all. Now, I will tell you that personally, I'm, I'm for giving these variances. I'm trying to see who sure. else is interested, who's not interested. So we, we can, that's why I'm asking Brad and you know, everybody where they're, where they're sitting. I mean, you're, you're only talking a couple of feet difference from what it was before. You want him to short the deck a couple of feet? Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. But, you know, you're, you're, you're like playing with nickels and dimes here. Rob, I'm inclined to agree with you. Okay. I'm feeling lonely here at my spot. <laughs> Would we like to vote on uh, Mary's motion? Should I, should I make it? Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so the, the first motion I'm gonna make is that I make a motion to accept the recommendations and findings of McKenna and deny the variances requested. I'll support. Okay, we will have a roll call vote. Mr. Aird. No. Chairperson Sutherland. No. No? No. Is that enough? Okay. Vice Chair Balaam. No. Secretary Matheson. Yes. Ms. Crawford. Yes. Three no's, two yeses. Okay, so that, that motion fails. So we want to do something, but we don't know what. Now we can vote on the each of the variances separately, I believe. Uh, so maybe that's the way to attack it, is just to look at the variances one at a time. So the first I have a question. Is I have a question. Set, set back, which seems to be that's the one in question. Uh, Susan, we've never done this. Can we vote on each one separately? I don't. I didn't say that yet, but I'm thinking we we could, unless you have another suggestion, Mr. Bailo, Doctor Bailo. No, I'm almost thinking we do have to vote on each one of them separately. So, I make a motion that we vote on each one of them separately. Well, I think we can just, I don't know that we need a motion to make a motion. I, I think we know. can we can attack them separately. <clears throat> okay. You want to start off with the first so one? This is the front yard setback. Uh, 25 feet required, 6.10 proposed. Uh, 
16 foot nine variance requested. I guess because this is a, a new build, we can't look at what the existing was. Um, the prior variance was a 17.4 um, variance request. So there, it went up a, a foot and a half roughly. Mm -hmm. Where we were. I mean, my, my gut feeling okay. through this and the talking to Mary's question is that I don't think we necessarily can or should take away what was already given. And I think she feels that way. Yeah, I do agree with that. Uh, you know, so now we're down to where we're saying a foot and a half on the, on the front yard set back. Um, Rob, what do you think? Do we? Uh... I, I think, and I guess also, I, I go back to my original comments, and I think I don't want to put words in the planner's mouth either. And they make it very clear that they can't look at what happened last time for what's going this time. Uh, but I think still that, you know, the, the question of what's the minimum can be done and was it an overbuild then? And is it any more of an overbuild now? I, I have to take you down the street sometime. Is. You won't believe what they're trying to do now. The whole street's overbuild. The end of the yeah. street. Uh, any more discussion? I, I would uh, hmm. Would you guys want to vote on them uh, separately or as a whole again? I'd be willing to vote for it on the whole again. Okay, then I make a motion to accept all three proposals. I'll second that. Yeah. Support it. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion from Dr. Bailo and support. And Mr. Regard, Member Regard, we could uh, have well, a vote. Well, don't we have to have findings of? Um, of why we're accepting them because oh, the recommendation was a denial. So we have to, we have to, have, am I correct, Doug? Yeah. We have to have findings. We've got a suggested motion format there. Mm. Hold on. I mean, you would essentially be looking at the findings, the fact that we proposed and you know, offering the inverse as your reasons. So, you know, to approve it, if we were to, to flip the findings of fact, we would say compliance with the ordinance standard for building height cannot be achieved while increased compliance with the setbacks isn't feasible. Uh, the proposed structure is not excessive for the lot. Uh, approval of the variances is consistent with the zoning ordinance intent. 
and does not create an excess building mass on the peninsula. Uh, the variances requested are the minimum possible. Uh, the, the parcel um, is non-conforming and similar to parcels along Long Point. Uh, the need for variances mm -hmm. is uh, not entirely self-created. Um, and then I would leave off the last one. Thank you. Thank you. Is that what you wanted to say? That's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> and do you have the rest? What's the rest of the stuff we got to have in there? Okay, that does covers us, doesn't it? That covers us. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. Well, the yeah, it's based on. I'm sorry. We have no other conditions except the one that's in the packet. Okay. Is that they provide the escrow account? That I'll make mention of that, and that the motion is um, approval or denial is based on the documents that were submitted. Okay. 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 Let's, let's proceed then. All right. Now you can vote. Okay. Roll call, please. Chairperson Sutherland. Yes. Vice Chair Bailo. Yes. Secretary Matheson. No. Ms. Crawford. No. Mr. Aird. Yes. Three yeses, two noes. Okay, I think that means the variances are approved. Yes. A lot of discussion for a virtual meeting, isn't it? Yes, it is. A lot of work in a virtual meeting. <laughs> okay. Mr. Roy, we hope you have a good build and get things. I, I don't think we have to do anything more, Doug, do we, on extending? The last approvals, because these are new approvals. Correct. So the these new approvals would go into effect um, for twelve months after the the uh, minutes are certified. So get Mr. Sobel and company moving quickly. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate all your time and uh, put you know. Okay, we are now at the point of next regularly scheduled meetings, May 7th, and I believe we have a case for that as well. That's correct. That's correct. Walter will be out of the house or captured in his little boxes on our screens. I don't know. I don't know. Can't answer Let's that. Uh, I would uh, make a motion this meeting be adjourned. Or I think we can do this with voice. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 I think you did. Thank you all. Thank you, Doug. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Thank, thanks, Susan. Nice to see everybody. Everybody yeah. stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. They choose a virtual background. All right. And then um, you can either take a picture that's already on your desktop.